Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And for those who are coming for the first time, I pray it will be a memorable time with you in Jesus' name. And for old timers, how many of us are old timers there? The Lord enrich your life with the word of God tonight in Jesus' name. And the resurrection power in Christ minister to your very heart and soul and wake you up and raise you up and revive you tonight in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We bless your name because you brought us together for a good purpose. And that purpose will be realized in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking that your resurrection power will enter and penetrate every spirit, soul, heart, and body. And we pray, Lord, you revive your people in Jesus' name. Anything that is dead in any part of our lives, any part of our body, any part of our family, anything that concerns us, anything that is dead, let your resurrection power raise it up in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you strengthen your people. Empower us, Lord, to go out and do exploits for your glory. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Mark chapter 5 tonight. And we're reading from verses 21 to 24. Then we'll go to verse 35 to verse 43. We're looking at Mark chapter 5 verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by sheep, unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. And he was near unto the sea. And behold, there comes one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Notice that. He said, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Very sick, near death, about to die. I pray thee, I'm pleading with you, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Your daughter will live. Your son will live. And the power of the Lord will raise everyone up in Jesus' name. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And before Jesus got to the house of Jairus to lay hands on that child, a woman having an issue of blood came and said, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. And that is what we studied last week. But now, before the story continues, you want to understand, it was a great privilege for Jairus to know that Christ was around. And it was a great thing for him to know where Christ was and how to find Christ. Christ is the answer to every problem to every challenge, even when the daughter was at the point of death, Christ still had the solution. And whatever is the challenge of your life, whatever, how small, how great, how big, how wide, how extensive, and how desperate you may be, Christ has the answer. He is the solution to every problem attacked by demons or afflicted by disease or anguished by death of a, loved, of a loved one, Christ is timely 
and is a timeless solution in every situation. Come to Christ and be relieved. It will solve your problem. It will answer your question. It will raise the dead. It will heal the sick. It will deliver the oppressed. Whatever it is, there is to be done in your life, in my life, in our lives together. The Lord will do it. Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came out of his religious circle. We need to understand that coming to Christ, there is a price to pay. He was one of the rulers of the synagogue. And as a ruler in the synagogue, his colleagues, religious leaders and rulers like himself, they didn't all believe in Christ. They didn't all honor Christ. They didn't all appreciate Christ. In fact, they criticized him. They opposed him. And they said some bad, bad things about him. But when you need help from Christ, you want salvation from Christ, you want um, healing from Christ, and you want the solution to your problem, you have to come out of that criticizing crowd. And so he came. He came out of that religious circle. You know, sometimes a religious circle with their tradition can tie you down. And you may be wondering, yes, I know Christ is there. Yes, I know Christ was, will heal. Yes, I know Christ will deliver. Yes, my daughter is at the point of death. And I know that Christ can lay hands on him and he will rise up. But I'm afraid of my religious circle. I'm afraid of my denomination. I'm afraid of the people that surround me. That's the price you have to pay. You have to come out from among them and then come to Christ. Even if you're coming alone, even if there's no support, even if there's no encouragement from anybody, but when you take that step of faith, a miracle will happen in your life. Life will come instead of death, and the power of heaven will come upon your life in Jesus' name. He came to Christ contrary to the tradition of the elders, and you have to leave all those traditions behind. And all the opinions of all those people, you have to leave all that behind. Everything you have heard, I've heard some negative things about that church. I've heard some negative things about the preacher. I've heard some negative things about that miracle worker. If you want the miracle of Christ, all those things you have heard, which are not true in any case, you have to leave them behind. His daughter was at the point of death and he needed Christ's touch. You need Christ's touch today. I said you need Christ's touch today. It will touch you and touch your life and remove every disgraceful, shameful problem out of your life in Jesus' name. You are ready for a touch today. I said you are ready for a touch today. Now let's come to verse 35. While he yet speak, there came forth from the rulers, uh, from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble? Why troublest thou the master any further? As they were now coming near to the house, some people came out of the house and he said, "The deed is done. The die is cast. The unthinkable has happened. The great loss of your life has happened. Your daughter." is dead so why are you troubling the master anymore it's gone beyond the point of solution when you come to christ there's no problem in your life that is not solvable it will solve your problem it will remove that heartache it will set you free whatever people say and they say there's no point praying anymore. There's no point calling on Christ anymore. There's no point touching Christ anymore. Just rest assured. Tonight, solution has come to your problem. 
tonight we're looking at the message Christ's unfailing power to raise the dead. Christ's unfailing power to raise the dead. Point number one, Christ's prevailing power over premature death. Please underline that word, premature death. Why? Are we emphasizing the word premature? It's appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. It's appointed unto men once to die. Abraham died. Sarah died. Moses died. Joshua died. And the elders that outlived Joshua, they died. Also David died. Solomon died. And as you look at the whole picture, John the Baptist also died. And Jesus did not go to raise John the Baptist. He was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's appointed unto men once to die. But for premature death, a daughter, a girl, a child of 12 years of age, that's premature. Your daughter will not die prematurely. Your son will not die prematurely. Even you yourself saying, Amen, you will not die prematurely. Even though it is appointed unto men who wants to die, there is premature death. And when premature death took place in the house of Jairus, Christ manifested prevailing power. And as we look at those verses, on this point one, number one, the announcement of the daughter's death. The announcement of the daughter's death. Look at this, verse 35. When he, yet, uh, when, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master? any further. That is the announcement of the daughter's death. Whatever negative announcement you have heard, whatever negative dream you have, Christ will turn it around. In John chapter 11, the announcement of premature death. In John chapter 11, I'm reading here from verse 14. In verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, then said, Master, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Again, this was premature death. The sisters were still alive. And there's Lazarus died just like that. And if premature death take place, that means it's not the appointed time. It's not the final time. Your hour for death has not come. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. It's young. He shouldn't have died. And if you had been here, he would not have died. But he is here now, and death will be reversed. He is here now, and that premature thing will be taken away in Jesus' name. Verse 39, Jesus said, take here away the stone. Master, the sister of him that was dead, says unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead for days. But nothing is impossible with Christ. Did I hear any amen there? Come back to verse 35. The announcement of the daughter's death. Number two. 
the assurance of divine dominion. The assurance of divine dominion. When Jesus had that, that that daughter was dead, he gave assurance. Mark chapter 5, verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he says unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. What's the Lord telling us tonight? Be not afraid, only believe. In that dire situation in your life, be not afraid, only believe. If you can only believe tonight, thank God there is faith in your heart. Thank God you believe the Lord. And if you believe the Lord and since you believe the Lord, the irreversible will be reversed. Be not afraid, only believe the assurance of divine dominion. Christ has power. Christ has authority. Christ has dominion over every challenge, over every problem. He has total control. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Our problems are solved. You know, many people, they go about life, they carry this load, they carry that challenge, they cry, and there's nobody to comfort them. They weep unendingly, unceasingly. But you need to understand, the end has not come. That problem will not end your progress. Even the death of Jairus' daughter is going to be reversed. All you need is faith in God. Be not afraid, only believe. And tonight and every time in your life, if thou canst only believe all things in your life, all things in your wife, all things on your daughter, all things on that son, you think, is gone very far. And he is irredeemable. That's not right. If you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Give God a good amen. amen. And so, as we believe, it will be done. In your life, it will be done. In our families, it will be done. Your tears are wiped away. We're coming to John chapter 11, verse 40. John 11. We're reading from verse 40. Here he tells us, Jesus says unto her, Said not I unto thee, that if thou, canst, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. I will see the glory of God. Somebody there, I will see the glory of God. All it takes is to believe. It's, you're not believing in yourself. You cannot do it. You're not believing in man. He may not be able to do it. You're not believing in a human authority. They may not be able to do it. But as you come and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, didn't I tell you that if you can only believe, you will see the glory of God. I rejoice with you. You will see the glory of God. Come back now to Mark chapter 5. Their attitude to his daring declaration. The attitude of the people before Christ got there. You know what they were doing? They were crying. There are some professional mourners. Anytime anybody died, they will, you know, put on their mourning garment and then they will go there. They will cry, crying for their crocodile tears. Look at chapter 5 of Mark. And I'm reading here from verse 37. Mark chapter 5, verse 37. And he suffered no man to follow him except Peter 
and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the multitude, and them that wept and wailed greatly, professional people. And when he was come in, he says unto them, Why make ye this ado? And we, the damsel, is not dead, but somebody tell me, sleepeth. And then in verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn. They were crying and crying and crying. They were weeping and wailing. And then when Jesus said, but she is not dead. She is only asleep. Then they turned immediately. They stopped the crying immediately. That tells you that the sobbing and the crying and the wailing was not real. So they stopped immediately and they let him to scorn. That's the attitude to his daring uh, declaration. But when he had put them all out. He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talita Komai. That's in their language which is being interpreted damsel i say unto thee shout it out arise something will arise in your life and that thing you have given up and you have said it's gone it's dead it will arise once again you see their attitude the attitude is always like that Christ makes a declaration and the people who couldn't believe and the people who will not believe they laugh they just don't allow the laughter of the people who don't believe don't allow that to catch you what Christ has said will come to pass when you say I'm going to have this I've been praying I'm going to have this I believe God and then the people who do not know how you've been praying and they do not know you have your trust and your confidence and your faith in God. They laugh. Don't allow their laughter to bring on belief in your heart. Whatever you are standing on and whatever you are claiming, you will have in Jesus' name. The first thing now is his authority over the damsel's death. His authority over the damsel's death look at look at it from verse 41 and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talita komai which being interpreted is damsel i say unto thee arise and straightway say that word Shout it out. Immediate miracle in your life. Immediate resuscitation in your life. Immediate power manifestation in your life. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was at the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. They were not expecting that. When Jesus said, he, she's not dead, but only sleeping. By the way, why did Jesus say that? Jesus was saying, as easy as it is for you to raise up your sleeping daughter. You call her name or you tap her a little and say, it's time to wake up, rise up. And your daughter rises up from sleep as easy as it is for you to raise your daughter from sleep so it is easy for Christ to raise Jairus daughter from the dead 
And as easy as it is for you to wake up somebody who is sleeping, it is so easy, it will not take time. It will raise up everything that is dead in your life. And then in verse 43, and he charged them straightway that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Let's come to John chapter 11. We're looking at that same power, that same authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 11. Reading from verse 39. Jesus said, Take here with the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, says unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead how many days? Four days. But all the same, there's no hindrance for Jesus Christ. Jesus says unto her, said not I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of God then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and says father I thank thee that thou hast heard me he has not even prayed. He has not said anything. And he said, Father, I call the things would be not as though they were. Even though I have not told you what I want you to do, you have heard me already. Before you pray, he will answer. Before you say, this, this, and that solution will come. Verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me how many times always he hears jesus always but because of the people which stand by i said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he had thus spoken he cried with a loud voice Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, no impossibility with Christ, no impossibility with our Savior, no impossibility with our redeeming deliverer. He came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus says unto them, everybody want to three go, lose him and let him go. Christ has all power to deliver, to heal, to set free, and to silence the devil, and to remove the power of death from your life. He has all power. And if you are looking up to the Lord tonight for anything, that power will work in your life. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, Jesus Christ himself, Likewise took part of the same, that he should, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. From what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, he has destroyed Satan that has the power of death. And delivered them who through fear of Death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Our deliverance has come. I said our deliverance has come. 
He will deliver us from every power of the wicked one in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Why are we studying this? Do we go about to every hospital and to every mourner's house and say, we have Christ. We have the power of Christ. We wake up and raise up everyone that died. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't do that. He raised up Jairus' daughter because it was premature death. And then the son, the only son of a widow, again, that was premature death. The mother, the widow was still alive. And because it was premature death, he raised him up. You remember Elijah? The person Elijah raised up, premature death, a child. Elisha, the person he raised up, it was premature death. He raised up the people that had death on them when they shouldn't have died. But you'll understand that prevention is better than kill. Prevention is better than kill. What does that mean? Jesus Christ taught people how to live so that they will not die prematurely. Jesus Christ taught people how to live so that they will not die a death that is avoidable. That's why we are carefully looking at point number two. Christians proper perception of preventable death. Christians proper perception of preventable death. A preventable just means that you will not die before your time. Okay, I will not die before my time. Your son will not die before his time. Your daughter will not die before her time. Your wife, your husband, the breadwinner will not die before their time in Jesus' name. And that is what you need to concentrate on now. Preventable death. Learning and living to prevent untimely death is wiser than praying after the person has died. It's better learning to live that to prevent untimely death is better than going fasting and praying so that you can raise one dead person. But learning and living to prevent untimely death is easier than praying to raise the dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ raised a few people from the dead, but he spent much of his time teaching many people to live righteously in order to prevent unnecessary death. You will not die unnecessary death. The apostles in the early church did the same thing. They preached to prevent many from dying unnecessarily rather than praying and fasting uh, to have a ministry of raising the dead. Righteousness protects believers from early death. As I see you today, I will see you again. You will not have died before the next time because what you are hearing today will prevent you from untimely death in Jesus' name. When we talk about preventable death, what does that mean? Come to Genesis. I'm reading from chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 3. See, the people that do not know the word of God, they die unnecessarily. In Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading here from verse 3, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast, which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. 
and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Look at this. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. That was preventable death. He had taken the wife of Abraham, and God had a covenant with Abraham. And God had said, the son that will come out of Abraham, he even gave the name, he'll be the fulfillment of the promise and the covenant of God. And now Abimelech took that Sarah. And God said, now you're a dead man. This one is not philosophical death. This one is not spiritual death. If you don't restore he, her, you will die. And all the people in your house, that's preventable death. And it is, that, it is that that the Lord was talking about. That one doesn't need prayer and fasting. That one doesn't need rolling on the ground. That one doesn't need speaking in tongues. It needs just make your way right. And the preventable death will go over you in Jesus' name. I want you to look at Second Samuel chapter 3. Second Samuel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 33. Second Samuel chapter 3 verse 33. And uh, the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dies? Abner died prematurely. Abner died suddenly. And the king lamented, Oh, Abner, did you die as a fool? Why did he say that? It's a death that could have been avoided. Turn back to verse 7. In verse 7, it says in chapter 3, verse 7, over here, And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rispa, the daughter of Ai, and Ishbosheth, said unto Abner, hear this, Wherefore hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? And then was Abner very wroth, Abner very angry, for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head? Which uh, that am I a dog's head? Which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul, thy father, to his uh, brethren and to his friends. And I'm not delivered thee into the hand of David that thou chargest me today with a fault concerning this woman. So do God to Abner. Is Abner talking? And more also, except as the Lord has sworn to David, even so I do to him. The story is this. Abner was accused that he was living an immoral life with the concubine of Saul who had died. And then because of that accusation, he got angry. He said, ah, you accused me of that? I'll show you. And he went to David and he went to say, I'm going to get the whole of Israel out of the hands of the son of Saul. And uh, David made uh, a pact with him. And while he was going, Job heard that he had come for that and went to him, Are you in good health, my brother? And he killed him. He shouldn't have died that death, but he was angry. There are people, premature days, they're accused of something, something has happened, they get so angry. And then they go to take a step. And through that step, they die. You will not die prematurely. Look at Second Samuel chapter 4. Second Samuel chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 10. Preventable death. Avoidable death. 
And this one doesn't need fasting and praying. It just needs patience. It needs uh, humility. It needs righteousness. And you will not die before your time. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 10. When one told me, saying, Behold, son is dead. Thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him, and I slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. What happened over here is that Saul died. And we know the story how Saul died. He was shot. And then he told his armor bearer that the armor bearer should kill him. And eventually when the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also killed himself. But this other person now, who did not kill Saul, but he thought he will flatter David. Your enemy is dead. And I saw it. And I have come now to give you the news. And David said, how do you know that um, Saul is dead? He said, I was there. He asked me. He said, there's no life in him anymore. I should take the sword and kill him. And I killed him. And David said, who are you? He said, I am an Amalekite. Ah, and you stretch your hand against the anointed of the Lord. That's how that man died. He shouldn't have died that death. You see, there are people, they want to have a good uh, comment from somebody, reward from somebody, and they go about, they even turn lies against themselves. They say, this is what I did. And they die unnecessarily. I will not die unnecessarily. You will not die unnecessarily. First Chronicles chapter 10. First Chronicles chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 13. First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. So Saul died. Oh, you say maybe that's, uh, that was the time he should have died. No. For his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit, and to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Disobedience killed the man. Going after familiar spirit to find out information killed the man. He died prematurely. I will not die prematurely. You will not die prematurely in Jesus' name. But don't get involved or things that don't concern you. Don't get involved or telling stories here and there, tale bearing. You take from this and go to that and go to that. And you're looking for their well done. You're looking for something from them. Don't die another person's death. Second Chronicles chapter 35. Second Chronicles chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 20. In 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Neko king of Egypt came up to fight against Kashemich by Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make, war, to make haste. Forbear, go back. Don't get involved with this. This is not your business. Forbear, forbear thee from meddling with God. Who is with me? 
that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself. He wanted to fight by all means. You know, there are people who are thirsty of fighting. They want to fight. They want to fight. And the king told, told him, this is not your business. What are you coming for? Why do you want God to destroy you? I didn't come to fight against you. Go back home. But he disguised himself and then not, and he would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Help me away, for I am so wounded. His servants therefore took him out of the chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem. Tell me what follows. Tell me again. Should he have died? No, he shouldn't have died. It wasn't his time to die. But he was so eager. He wanted to show power. He wanted to show courage. He wanted to fight. And he died. And was buried in one of the sepulchers of his father and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned, they lamented for Josiah unnecessary death you will not die like that you see people fighting don't go there you see people who are quarreling and they're using charms on each other and they're using stick or whatever on each other don't say that's my friend I must defend him. If he's your real friend, he shouldn't be fighting. Leave him alone. Let them finish their own business. After they are finished, you'll preach repentance and salvation to him. Are you here? Your amen. You must not die unnecessarily. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Wickedness shortens life. Sin shortens life. The years of the wicked shall be shortened. Look at Psalm 55. Psalm 55, we're reading from verse 23. Psalm 55, verse 23. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Listen to this. The bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Half their days. If they should have lived up to 80, they will not live up to 40. If they should have lived up to 70, they would not live up to 35. If they should have lived up to 100, they wouldn't live up to 50. Why? Bloody and deceitful men shall not live, have their days. You'll not be a deceitful man. You'll not be a deceitful woman. And you'll not be a bloody person, a bloodthirsty person. You will live your days to the full. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm reading verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17. Be not overmuch wicked. 
neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time wicked people you know they are rioting outside and carrying this and carrying that and they say we must fight it out you have your life to live you have a future in front of you and there are people they just go on and go on and the last one they do is like they've gone over that's why it's saying be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before your time you will not die before your time Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 Acts chapter 5 We're reading from verse 1 Acts chapter 5 verse 1 But a certain man named Ananias With Sapphira his wife Sold a possession And kept back part of the price His wife also being privy to each And brought his certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not in thine power, in th thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Did we force you? Did we say you must bring anything? Is it not a voluntary offering? Why are you doing this? Why hast thou conceived this sin in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, tell me, fell down and gave up the ghost and great fear came on all them that had these things he shouldn't have died if he had thought about it okay this is what i want to give to the lord and i want to retain the rest for myself for my family and to do this or that there's no point to lie if he had come to the apostle and he said i sold my property but I'm deciding to give this percentage, this fraction, unto the Lord. That will be all right. But he came as if he brought everything. And Peter the apostle said, is it everything? Oh yes, everything, everything. And then the apostle said, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? He died prematurely. I will not die prematurely. You will not die prematurely. Look at verse 10. What are reading here now from, let's, let's read it from verse 7. And in verse 7, and it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, tell me, whether he sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, yes, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that she have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and she and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at, at his feet and yielded up the ghost and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth buried her by her husband was it time for her to die i said was it time for her to die it's not time for you to die. Don't meddle with things that are wicked, that are evil, that are deceptive, and then eventually something that shouldn't happen will happen. It will not happen to you. 
Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. We're reading from verse 20. Acts chapter 12, verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him. And having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friend, and desired, they desired peace because their country was uh, nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and he made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. Was Herod God? He was man. Wasn't he? The people. Don't allow people to push you and push you and push you to die on timely death, on necessary death. They shouted and they said, It's the voice of a God and not the voice of a man. And he loved that. He accepted that. The people that love flattery and they love uh, unmerited honor, he accepted that. Look at verse 23. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and he gave up the ghost. Remain righteous. Your life will be preserved in Jesus' name. You will not die prematurely. And if there is anything that is dead in any area of your life, he'll raise you up tonight in Jesus' name. Point number three, after people have died, whether they die prematurely and then they don't come back, or they die normally, what happens after death? Point number three now, conscious perpetual preservation after pronounced death. After somebody is pronounced dead, the fellow is gone and is not to return here. After that pronounced death, there is constant, conscious, perpetual preservation. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, we're reading from verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and as it is appointed unto men wants to die, but after this the judgment. After this the judgment. There are two sides because there are two kinds of people. There are sinners on the one hand, there are saints on the other hand. There is hell on the one hand, there is heaven on the other hand. We're looking at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. We're reading from verse 22. Luke chapter 16. Reading from verse 22. In verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died also. And he was buried. You see that the saint died, was carried by angels into, into Abraham's bosom. The sinner died, and he was buried. Two parts. Number one, the immediate consciousness of saints after death. Immediate consciousness. Immediately a saint dies, a righteous person dies here on earth, immediately he goes to heaven and he will be conscious immediately. Luke chapter 23. In Luke chapter 23, we're reading from verse 42. 
Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Tell me, tell me, tell me, shout it aloud, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. There is uh, no interval. Immediately that thee from the cross died. Because he received salvation right there. Redemption right there. Today you'll be with me in paradise. John chapter 17 verse 24. John 17 verse 24. Father... I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Where is Jesus now? In heaven. And those you have given to me, I want them to be with me where I am. And that they may behold my glory. Immediately children of God die, saints of God die. They go to heaven and they see the glory which thou hast given me for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world let's look at acts chapter 7 acts chapter 7 reading from verse 55 acts 7 verse 55 but he being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. You'll see the heavens open. And the Son of God standing on his right, on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying what did he say? What did he say? Say it like he said it. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The Lord was standing in heaven to welcome him home. Immediately a child of God dies. He goes to heaven. He doesn't go roaming about in another place. He doesn't go to purgatory. He goes to the very presence of God. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 5. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 8. Second Corinthians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 8. It says in verse 8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Immediately the spirit goes out of the body, absent from the body. That spirit is present with the Lord immediately. Philippians chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, reading from verse 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If he died and then he went to uh, somewhere where there's no light, no Christ, no peace, no joy, no angel, that will not, that will not be gain. But because he knew that if he died, the moment he died, he closed his eyes here, he will open his eyes in heaven. Did he say amen to that one? For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I would not, for I am in a strait betwixt you, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. Having a desire to depart. He said, when I depart, and if I depart, I'll be with Christ, which is far better. You will not miss that glorious city. And you will not miss that heaven in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh. Who is that? To him that overcometh. I said, who is that? That's you. You will overcome. Will I give to each of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God? Chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Your good works will follow you. The result, reward of your evangelization will follow you. Remain righteous, remain a saint, and if the rapture is delayed and you die before the rapture, you'll go to heaven straight. Straight. No hindrance in your life on your way in Jesus' name. Saints die, sinners die. When sinners die, there is instantaneous consciousness of sinners after death. The sinners died. It's going to be conscious on the other side. Let's come back to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, a meeting from verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man died also and was buried and in hell he lifted he lift up his eyes being in torment and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom he was conscious and he could see and he cried and said he was conscious he could talk father Abraham he recognized even Abraham. He was conscious. Have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. He was conscious. There is immediate instantaneous consciousness when a sinner dies and goes to the other side. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. His brain will function. His mind will function. His consciousness will function. Remember, he could remember. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from this. Very conscious, very conscious. There's consciousness after 
death. You will not die the death of a sinner. Uh, look at Mark chapter 9. Read him from verse 43. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. Here we're told of the consciousness of the people that go to that other side. 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands go, uh, to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. The fire will never be quenched. And it says, where the worm dies not, the cells of the body will not die. And any part of the body, every part of the body will remain alive. And the fire is not quenched. It will not happen to you. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. In Second Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 8. In verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Flaming fire. How long will that fire be? Revelation chapter 14. Reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 14, verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture on into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up how long forever and ever and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receives the mark of his name, they'll be tormented forever and ever. Day, but not you. I said not you. We have learned today about the deaths of young people. If you are not of age and you are sick, the Lord will take that sickness away from you. And if you are a child of God and your time comes eventually to go, you'll go to the right hand side. You will go to heaven. You will not perish. You will be conscious You'll be praising God forever and ever because you are saved. But if somebody is not saved, you must be saved tonight. I said you must be saved tonight. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved in Jesus' name. Now, if you have terminal disease and you don't want to die yet, can I say how many people don't want to die yet? I'm number one. I don't want to die yet. How about you? I said I about you. Let me read a story to you. For you to understand. Fear not, only believe. If you can only believe, all things are possible. Sicknesses will vanish away. Untimely death will vanish away. You will live. Happy life. Holy life, righteous life, healthy life, sound life. Every sickness will be taken away from you. Second Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 1. In those days was Ezekiel sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed 
unto the Lord, saying, Anytime any negative dream, negative prophecy comes, turn away from that negative prophecy. Pray to the Lord. The Lord will answer your prayer. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. If you cannot say that, you'll say, O Lord, remember Jesus, how he's, he represented me. He's my substitute. He lived a perfect life, and his righteousness is transferred to my account. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. And it came to pass, it's coming to pass tonight, and for Isaiah was gone into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. God has heard your prayer. I have seen thy tears. He has seen your sorrow. Behold, I will heal you. Behold, he will heal you. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days, 15 days, 15 weeks, 15 months, tell me, tell me, 15 years, you have a long time to live, and you will do good. 15 years, it will add, and I will deliver thee and, and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for the sake for this for my servant David's sake and Isaiah told said take a lump of figs and he took and laid it upon the boil and he recovered and he recovered what are you you will recover stand up and tell the Lord tell the Lord what you want your life must be free free from sickness free from infirmity free from the power of death you will not die prematurely this is your time to tell the Lord tell him tell him tell him untimely death will pass over you premature death will pass over you avoidable death will pass over you but remember wickedness shortens life wickedness shortens life be not over much wicked enough is enough turn to the side of the lord and say lord forgive me lord save me lord erase all my sins Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, tell him. And that Christ has borne your punishment. He has died your days. You mustn't die in sin. And you mustn't die prematurely. You mustn't die an untimely days. Take the word of God serious. There's a time to call upon the Lord. He is answering prayers right now. He is forgiving sins right now. He is erasing all the wickedness of the past right now. And he's sending forth, he's sending away messengers of death against your life. He's sending them away right now. If there's anything in your hand, like a bimelech, and the Lord told him, you're a dead man. If you don't restore Abraham's wife, you will surely die. You don't have to die. Restore. Make that restitution. Come straight. Live a righteous life. 
believe the word of God. Abimelech rose up early in the morning the following day. And he did what the Lord had told him to do. And he didn't die. You will not die on necessary days. Look at Abner. Anger, anger, anger. And so in anger, he led his bushes and went to David. I'm returning all the people to you. And he met his death, untimely days, in the hands of Joab. Live your life. And leave all things that do not concern you, leave them alone. And live a happy life, satisfied life, controlled life, moderate life, a life that is patient. You're not running, running, running because of anger. You will live. For a long time. Don't die like Josiah. Necho, the king of Egypt, told him, I have nothing to do with you. I'm not fighting you. Why are you going to meddle with a fight that is not yours? But Josiah was a good king, a righteous king, but wanted to fight. His brain was hot. His mind was hot. He was fervent for the wrong thing. And then he went to fight, even though he disguised himself. And the archers shot him. Died on necessary days. Promised the Lord. You live a righteous life, a contented life. You're rushing at fights that do not concern you. You're patient. You are watchful. You don't get into any riot. That doesn't concern you. Keep your life. Keep your soul. Don't be like Saul. Wait to see from the familiar spirit. Who disregarded the word of God. And he died unnecessarily. Don't consult with any familiar spirit. Don't do anything that God will be angry at. Yemen, Ananias, and Sapphira, we don't have to tell lies. You give 50%, say it's 50%. You give 10%, say it's 10%. We don't have to exaggerate. I emptied my account. I brought everything. I sold all my property. I brought all the money to the church. You don't have to tell a lie. Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost. Lied unto God, died unnecessarily. And the wife, in agreement with the husband, is it for so much you sold the land? Yes, apostle, for so much. How have you agreed together? To lie to the Holy Ghost. They died unnecessarily. 
Why will you die the death of a liar? The death of a flatterer. Why will you die the death of a pretender? The death of a pugnacious person fighting when there's no fight. Going to a battle where there's nothing to fight about. Why will you die before your time? Tell the Lord. Help me to be reasonable. Help me to be righteous. Help me to be consecrated unto you. Help me to be yielded unto you. Help me, Lord, to have a holy life, a righteous life, a patient life, a controlled life, spirit-controlled life. Let me live all my days. My life is precious to you and to me. And I will not gamble with my life and go do things that will make your edge and your protection to be of my life. God answers prayer. Tell him. Pray to him. He answers prayer. Be righteous. Be holy. Be under the control of the Spirit of God. Be obedient to the word of the Lord. And what you have learned today, take it to other people so that they will know sinners who die immediately go to hell. Tell them. And they'll be conscious immediately after death. And they'll be conscious forever and ever in hell. They'll remember. They'll have eyes to see. They'll feel the pain, the torture, the torment of eternal fire in hell. There's instantaneous consciousness for sinners after death. It's appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment won them. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And if anyone dies in sin without salvation, he will live in conscious suffering forever and ever in hell. For saints so die, we don't mourn unendingly, unceasingly, as people that have no hope, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And the Lord receives the saints so die immediately like steaming Lord Jesus receive my spirit the saints who die dying in the Lord they'll be with Jesus forever and ever and so shall we ever be with the Lord Jesus told that thief on the cross today, Thou shalt be with me 
in paradise. Pray that when it comes to your time to leave, you live in holiness. You live in happiness. You live with joy. You live with great expectation and hope. The Lord can make that happen. All sins forgiven, hearts cleansed, life transformed, spirit so holy, righteous before the Lord. And those who die like that, righteous, they'll be with the Lord forever and ever. And great will be their reward in heaven. And while you're still here, pray that you'll live good quality life. Life of strength, without sickness, without disease, without weakness, without oppression, without any evil, tell the Lord, He is able. He heals, He delivers, and if there is anything dead in your life or dead in your body, tell the Lord, like He raised up the daughter of Jairus, resurrection power will work in your life. Will answer your prayer if you tell him, if you believe him, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. As he saves, he heals. As he saves, he delivers. As he saves, he set free. He answers prayer. And it's a solution to every problem you may have. He will answer every prayer. So keep on praying and believing. He will answer every prayer. Rest in Him. He will answer every prayer. Stay. Abide. In His word. He answers every prayer. And whatever you have asked Him. And you believe. You know it is done. Thank him, it is done. Praise him, it is done. Confess it, claim it, believe it, rejoice in the answer, it is done. Jairus, daughter, has come back alive. The torch of the Lord will be in your life. The glory of the Lord will shine in your life. Did I not say unto you, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? He'll show you his glory. He'll show you his power. The Lord has answered your prayer. I said the Lord has answered your prayer. 
every good thing you have asked him is already available to you every negative thing you have prayed against is taken away from your life you will live resurrection power will walk in your life everyone I said everyone no exception I will not be an exception lift up that and father in Jesus name we bless your name for what we have learned today Lord I pray premature death you cancel from everyone in Jesus name on the road protect your people at work protect your people in their journeys protect your people in the night protect your people when they are awake protect your people when they are sleeping protect your people and i pray you drive away every messenger of death from their lives in jesus name and spiritually let them come alive those who are dead in sins and trespasses, quicken them and save them in Jesus' name. Anything that is dead in anyone, Lord, I pray you revive them now in Jesus' name. Every good thing they have asked from you, grant unto everyone. Every evil thing they have prayed against, take it away from them in Jesus' name. Life for everyone. Healing for everyone. Salvation for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Long, long, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.